Hello and welcome back to A World Without with me, Chris. And me, Jack. This is the podcast where we get into the hypothetical and discuss what we think would happen if something from our everyday lives suddenly stopped existing tomorrow. Yes, we do. And today we're taking a look at what life might be like in a world without eggs. Poor defenceless eggs, eh? They're like the epitome of, of delicate. Yeah, yeah, they are. Well, depends which way you squeeze them, because isn't it if you squeeze them from the top, they're like indestructible or something? That's true. They are. They have a secret hidden strength to them. But typically, they are, they're pretty weak, right? They're the symbol of fragility. When you're packing your shopping bag, they're the things you've got to really keep an eye on. Exactly. You've got to make sure they're all, all vertical. They can't even, like, run away or anything. They can't even roll away very well from any danger, because they're just all wobbly, and they'll just, like, fall off the edge of whatever they're rolling down. They're not designed with the most ergonomic shape to roll, are they? They're a bit all over the place. No, considering that they hold something so precious to the to the mama bird, hmm. like, you'd think that'd be a little bit easier to protect. Why haven't they got, like, big spikes on them and made of, like, super hard metal or something yeah that is a good point because evolution is normally pretty good at that isn't it it's normally quite good at like you know working out the best solution for every situation it has just created something incredibly vulnerable that <laughs> yeah. is incredibly important it's like how has that not evolved a bit better over time <laughs> you know it's just like, i know we'll just make the mother bird sit on it for a very long time i guess the problem is the bird needs to get out so if it was impenetrable then you've, you've trapped the bird in there forever so trap door mate <laughs> trap door yeah. yeah i don't think i look evolution's cool it's done some <laughs> wild stuff but a trap door and an egg is maybe asking a bit much maybe yeah nature's not done very well with wheels and hinges i don't think it really kind of does those yeah yeah mechanics it's not quite got there <laughs> yet you know yeah unfortunately not but you know the, the eggs never had a chance maybe another few couple of years maybe and evolution would have caught up and we would have started having yeah. some trapdoor eggs but no they have gone from the world because they've been picked on so unfairly it's like pick, pick on someone your own size world like a like a christmas ball ball or something what else is fragile like a, a ball ball and an egg could have like a fight right what would who would win in a fight between those i think the ball ball's got that you think it's still got it yeah i think it's just all like show offy it's all glitzy and like look at me look at me i'm all shiny and nice and then actually yeah but the mental game's half the battle <laughs> of a fight right like i think he's coming in like you know showing off a lot more i think the egg's running scared you think be honest. it's yeah. rolling away probably and then he's laughing at him rolling away look, look at him try he's stumbling all over the whoa, place whoa. you're drunk mate go on he just feels even more embarrassed <laughs> and then he leak he cracks and leaks everywhere it's a whole thing oh that's the worst <laughs> <laughs> but you're right though yeah the eggs can be really strong i do you know how strong they can be uh i'm gonna say very very is a correct answer how i wasn't really sure the metric like what <laughs> uh you want me to give you a metric of how many like newton tons or whatever they can take or um, I, I don't know i don't even know for what's force what force is force is, uh, <laughs> yeah i don't know it's in star wars i think i don't know it's something yeah yeah that's, that's what what I know. how much do you weigh if that isn't a rude question uh, like 60 kilos, I think. Oh, you, you, my friend, that is exactly how much an egg potentially could withstand. You can stand on an egg. So I could make shoes out of eggs, is what you're telling me? You could have egg shoes, yeah. One egg per leg. One egg per leg. That's, that's the catch <laughs> right there. Oh, wow. Look, we've done it many times, but that has got to be up there with the top five things we've got on this podcast. Egg yeah. shoes. One egg per leg. Oh, my God. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> that's crazy that's a crazy man obviously i'm sad because i can't stand on any eggs without breaking them how many eggs would you need one and a bit <laughs> i would need i mean an egg an egg per leg would distribute it that would be enough actually for me oh yeah that's true actually yeah i only need one le egg spread across so i'm i'm kind of doing like a pogo stick kind of vibe i guess <laughs> yeah exactly so you you really can you can walk along and you can lose one of your shoes and you're still good yeah, yeah. whereas me i need both I'm afraid. You definitely need both. But yeah, because how does that work? The moment you like lift one leg up, you're putting all your weight on one leg. So yeah. I have to kind of like shuffle along. Or if I use them as like wheels of, of like... No, because then if they're rolling, they're on the side, which is the weak side. Oh, that's true. Like they always need to be remain upright. You're right. You're right. Yeah, I haven't thought this through. And they don't way. roll that way at all. <laughs> Just imagine that you just like shuffling along on an egg now, like a like a tiny <laughs> little um beeble bopper or whatever they're called, right? Yeah. But like, yeah, I don't think it's the most practical form of footwear, but it's good to know it's an option, I guess. Yeah, yeah. 
I feel like chickens, uh, uh, other than the fact that they can't have children anymore, but I feel like they're going to be relieved in some way. Imagine pooping out a big egg like that, like twice a day. Is that how many it is? Is it twice a day? I think they, I think they can egg twice a day. Yeah, maybe. Okay. Yeah, wouldn't be my ideal situation. I mean, what's how relative size is it? It's the same size as if we was to be trying to squeeze a uh, a mango, quite a quite a big mango out of our body. Oh yeah, that's bigger than the stuff I'm usually dealing with. <laughs> yeah, me too. Yeah. You, me you've, too. Had, you've had a big night if you're squeezing out a mango. Oh yeah, really? <laughs> a whole mango, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, mm. It does, however, answer the question of what came last, the chicken or the egg. Right. We may never know what came first, but the chicken definitely came last now. We know that We know that for... So let's assume the egg must have come first if the chicken came last. It's only fair. That That's a good way of balancing it, keeping a little bit of symmetry in the world. Yeah, I like it. So the philosophers can finally put that one to rest, which is nice. It doesn't answer the question, however, why did the chicken cross the road? Or does it? Because maybe the chicken was looking for its eggs that have gone missing now. Yeah, they woke up in the morning, checked under them. Thought, hang on. Meant to be some eggs there. It went out for a little wonder and uh, died? <laughs> <laughs> Is that the basic premise of the joke? I think that's the hilarious ending. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Why did the chicken cross the road? I don't know, but it just died. <laughs> yeah. yeah there you go well unless uh, chickens if you're listening this is what happened to your egg you don't need to go looking for it anymore they've all gone i'm afraid to tell you i'm sorry to be the the bearer of bad news or good news if you didn't like pooping them out twice a day it's a lot of egg pooping do you think a chicken's ever listened to our podcast before i don't think for its own uh free will um i don't think it's ever put it on but i think i think oh you think there's some people forcibly making chickens listen to us right now? No, no not, uh, forcibly feels uh, a bit too aggressive. I think there may have been some chickens who have passively listened to our podcast. Right, right. You know what? I'm actually not sure there is. Because if you're going to be listening to a podcast out and about, maybe in your garden, whilst you're tending your chickens, I reckon you're in headphones, aren't you? You're not, you're not blaring that out loud. That's true. And if you are blaring it out loud in your living room... I don't think many people are knocking around with a chicken in their living room. I'm sure there are some. But I think the crossover are our audience... And people who listen to podcasts out loud in their living room that also have chickens. I, I think, I don't think that Venn diagram overlaps at all. It's it's quite a niche demographic yeah, there, yeah. Yeah, that we're looking for. <laughs> yeah, so I'm going to go quite confidently with no. But if you're, if you're listening, anyone, and you've got a chicken that's bopping along, listening, nodding, enjoying it, please do let us know. Yeah, send a picture. I'd love to see that. Yeah, we really actually genuinely would. <laughs> They are pretty pretty handy, those eggs, that they come in their own packaging, right? Not many things do come in their own packaging. Maybe bananas as well are the other one that comes to mind. I was just about to say bananas. Yeah, it's the first thing that came came to mind. Both of them very thoughtful as things go that are pre-packaged. Well, when does the packaging start? Because, I mean, you know, why why does it... I guess you just don't eat it. So oranges? Is that packaging? Ooh, uh, yeah, I guess anything you... Peel, but for some but like a potato apple. doesn't feel as much like packaging, yeah. does it? Yeah, and an apple and stuff. Yeah, so that's what. Where's the line? How thick has the the skin got to be until it becomes packaging? Yeah, I definitely feel like a an orange has thick enough skin to be called packaging. Yes, I mean an eggs an eggs skin, not skin shell is <laughs> uh, quite thin. I would say. I would say it's not much thicker than like an apple skin. I mean, it is, obviously, but it's not much. Yeah, it's only going to be a, a couple of millimetres at, at most, yeah. isn't it? So the, the line is very fine there between packaging and, and just skin, isn't it? But yet we would sell apples on their own, whereas you still put eggs in a box. It's the fragility thing again, isn't it? Back to the fragility. Always with the fragility. You're not going to get home and find your apples have leaked everywhere. Yeah, no, that's true. Or you just made apple juice then at that point. And honestly, I think that's a better situation. <laughs> you prefer the juice to the apples. I'd always prefer the juice to the apples, yeah. What else? There must be some other other food that comes in its own packaging like that. Although I d- disagree, because it's not very good packaging, is it? As we just said, it has to come with extra packaging on top of that to actually be any use. This so is it's true. Not, it's not great packaging. Or is an egg carton just more to group your six eggs together or your 12 eggs together and that? Why, why do they always come in those numbers? Yeah, what is that? What's that all about? Supermarkets? What's the conspiracy there? I want five eggs, please. Yeah, I think feel like six is a lot of eggs. I'll do four things. Although maybe I'm wrong. That might not be universal in most places. I swear I've been to countries where they sell eggs in fours. 
Oh, you think it's just, it's a country by country thing? Yeah, maybe. I think six is the standard, but I've def- I've definitely seen tens. Tens are quite common. You're right. I have seen tens as well. Why? Why? That's not a multiple of six. What? What's going on? Who's picking these numbers? Mm. I get like an odd number is weird because it ma- it makes yeah. the packaging funny. But why not eight eggs? Why? Why not four eggs? Like you say, why can't I just go and buy two eggs at a supermarket? Yeah, they should have it, individual barcodes on them as well. So you know, like you you can sometimes buy something in like a pack. Like you know, you have like a six pack of drinks, but you can also just take one out and buy it individually. Yes. Yeah. Why? Why can't we do that with eggs? I just want the one egg, thanks. That would be great. And they they can you can print a barcode on an egg shell itself. Yeah, they've already got the date on them, like the sell by date on them. Exactly. Right? So. They were made made to be sold separately. Sometimes I just want a single egg. You know. I just want to walk into a shop and buy an egg, please, and leave. I don't have to be dealing with knowing what to do with five other eggs. Ugh. That's so much eggs. Yeah. It's, just, it's too much egg. Favourite type of egg? Um, Chicken? Oh, uh, I meant preparation style. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, chicken is still my answer. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I like my eggs chicken prepared. Um, How would you like your eggs, sir? Uh, chicken, please? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That'll confuse them for a while. That's what I'm going to say next time I get asked how I want my eggs. Uh, chicken? <laughs> You're right. There are a lot of, famously, a ton of ways to cook eggs. Like, it's ridiculous. The, the chefs around the world have had a field day when it came to eggs as an ingredient. Mm. Them and potatoes, both of them together. You could, uh, both. If you have a meal with a potato and an egg, you can make a bajillion things. It is yeah. The amount of the amount of variations and permutations of that meal combo is uh, yeah. It's quite something. Yeah. I mean, even even cake, even even c- cake has egg in it sometimes. Like what? You wouldn't you wouldn't imagine you're eating a cake. You don't imagine there's egg in there. What? Don't you? I don't imagine there's egg in there. There's nothing eggy about a cake. That's a good point. There isn't anything eggy about a cake. Yeah, if you think about it too hard, it is kind of gross that eggs are in cake, actually. I'd be horrified. Imagine just cutting into a nice Victoria sponge and then there's some, like, scrambled egg just spilling out. Oh, what what flavour is this? Oh, egg flavour. Oh, (laughs) no, no, thank you. I do not want this cake. You (laughs) madman. I'm sorry, but I had five extra ones. I didn't know what to do with them. (laughs) Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Got to put them in something. You didn't answer, other than chicken, uh, what your favourite type of egg was. (laughs) Yeah, sorry. I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking. I, th- oh, okay. I, it might have to be scotched. Oh, okay. I don't think that's one of the normal options, but I do respect <laughs> it. I, I do really respect that as an answer. Uh, <laughs> you go to have a fry up. Uh, how would you like your eggs? Chicken and scotch, please. <laughs> I am I'm terrible going into a restaurant me man. Yeah, they just roll with the rise oh, it's this guy again. <laughs> Throwing them for loops all over the place. I'm just messing with the system. I, I just don't want to roll with the punches like everybody else, no. Um I, I, I like scrambled No, I keep the scotch. Scotch is a fantastic <laughs> answer. I it was so, I did not see it coming. You could have given me six guesses and I wouldn't have got to scotch. <laughs> <laughs> have you ever made scotch eggs? No. Hard. Tricky. Is it? Very hard. How do you get the scotch to stick to the egg? That that's one of the things. Well, the wonders of the world. I I don't know. Mine often fell off. It's just sausage meat and breadcrumbs. It is. Yeah. You get you get your egg. You soft boil it. So you already you already cook the egg. You're not like trying to sort of put a raw egg inside of a. You know. Get what I mean? If you try and shove a raw egg inside, <laughs> you're doing it right. You're not like making a little holder, like injecting raw egg into it and then cooking that whole thing. You know what that could be a way of I'm, I'm imagining you you make like a no how would you get it out i was gonna say freeze a sausage s- sphere yeah with a little hole in it and then yeah yeah how, how are you getting the hole in the inside yeah that but how are you getting the hole maybe a balloon a little tiny balloon yeah, you blow yeah. A balloon up this does feel more complicated than just boiling the egg though i do see why they <laughs> they took that approach yeah it might be a bit easier so yeah you boil your egg as soft as you can get it out wrap it in sausage meat no, hold on not as soft as you can because that's just raw egg. As, okay, as soft <laughs> as soft as is handleable. Still, if right. you don't want to, you don't want a hard boiled egg. You want a soft boiled yeah, egg yeah, to, yeah. to go. You, in, you want then... it so just about holds its shape. Oh, just, just. Yeah. There's a little bit of like fear and tension there. That's what yeah, makes yeah. a good chef is if you know just how mm. soft your eggs can be to still handle yep. them. Yeah, sausage meat them. Maybe a little bit of a an egg wash or something to make the breadcrumbs stick. So you're double egging at that point. 
and then uh, deep fry it, and that will probably cook the egg a little bit more inside. Hence, why you wanted to soft boil it originally. Yeah, and this this is my this is just generally an issue I have with cooking. How much better is that going to be than just buying a Scotch egg? You know what I mean? Like, just buy a Scotch egg. I think I would always just buy a Scotch egg, yeah. Uh, unless you're making them en masse and you have the... There's a factory out there that makes Scotch eggs. I would love to see its machinery doing its thing. Oh, maybe they do it weird. Yeah, maybe they do inject it into it and like have like weird moulds and stuff. I don't think they do, because when you bite into a Scotch egg, it's still got like the white and the yellow are separated. As soon as you're yeah, injecting yeah, anything, yeah, yeah. Un- unless <laughs> you get the yolk and you freeze it in a ball, and then you... No, I'm, I'm lost now. Yeah, I, d- I don't think that works. I do think maybe just... I think just cook an egg like yeah, normal. Egg. You are right now. Now I do want to know how a Scotch egg factory works, because so, I feel like they've always got weird ways of doing stuff when it's like factory made because they're just like you know efficiency and stuff yeah because it feels like you can't individually we boil an eggs and then having a machine coat it in nah i can't see that happening i want to watch an episode of how it's made scotch egg edition yeah so do i now it'd be mesmerizing if anyone knows how scotch eggs made let us know how do you like your eggs poached cool I mean, yeah, it depends, though, because, like, if I'm making it, I'm not doing a poached egg. Poached eggs are also, there's all these ways of, like, you can swirl them, you can do this and that. But how do they never come out as pretty as when you get them made by a professional? Yeah, I know what you mean. So, yeah, if I was making it, I'm not normally bothering with a poached egg. But if I'm getting to choose any type of egg, got to be poached. Yeah, poached is up there on my list, I must say. Worst? Ooh. Uh, century. Pardon? Century egg. Pardon? Have you ever seen a century egg before? How are you... Sp- like, is in a hundred years? Yep. N- never heard of it. They're a delicacy in... It's somewhere in Asia, I think. I'm not entirely right. sure where, but it's basically like a... It's like a black egg because it's been fermented for so long. Right. Then, then yes. I would, I guess, also pick that. Again, I was going with the standard sort of main <laughs> five... Um, chicken again being the uh, assumed guess how long it takes to make a century egg by the way I'm just going to go out and live and say it isn't 100 years seeing as you're asking the question it's not 12 days a little bit longer it takes a, it takes a month okay well they've really overestimated that haven't they it's I think it's um false advertising yeah does it accumulate to like a, a hundred hours no uh <laughs> Mm. <laughs> there's no way any which way you chop it they're lying somewhere along the line yeah they're just liars yeah i'm, I'm, I'm giving them too much benefit of the doubt aren't I? you are you are no century eggs they should be called monthly eggs or or four weekly eggs i can see why they tra- went the other option just doesn't sound as good does it just a fermented egg even it's not like you make some baked beans on toast and you say this is a seven minute baked beans on toast like you don't need to add the time it took to make the thing into the name of the food yeah but when you're dealing with a rotten old egg i mean you have got to upsell it a little bit haven't you i mean you got to try your best to spruce it up a bit yeah you got to try your hardest so i can see why they why they're struggling make it sound a bit gla- more glamorous than it is yeah you don't, don't just go rotten egg yeah <laughs> that's not, probably not the best way to go about it <laughs> Oh man, rotten eggs. Have you have you ever had a rotten egg? Um, ever smelt one? S- smelt one for sure. I've definitely had food poisoning from eggs, but I wouldn't have said they were like rotten because I didn't notice at the time. Right. But I've had food poisoning from eggs, but no, never like eat an actual rotten egg because I feel like the smell would put me off before it goes in my mouth. You know what I mean? It's quite nice of the egg to actually warn you yeah. that it's off. Like it's it's quite good. Some foods they're not very clear that they're maybe a little bit on off or whatever yeah. until you've eaten some of it and then you start thinking hang on a minute what's whereas a rotten egg someone could uh, crack an, a rotten egg like the other side of the street and you'd start smelling it it's i mean but to be fair eggs aren't smelling that great even in their best day you know what i mean that's true as well isn't it i do like an egg but the smell of an egg is a bit like oh do i like eggs anymore i think i might not like an egg now and then you taste it again and you're like oh yeah i remember i like an egg What's up with that? Why, why do they smell different to how they taste? Uh, I think a lot of things do, don't they? Does mo- do many things taste like they smell? Uh, they're kind of supposed to a bit, right? That's the that aren't they like linked? You're smelling your taste. Yeah, apparently. So, have you eaten a rotten egg? I've never eaten one. No, again, because of the pre-warning I I was given. Immediately, I knew. I just cracked it. Oh, oh, rotten egg. They're like nature's hand grenade or something. See, who's upselling now? 
me. Yeah. <laughs> That's what I'd do if I had a load of rotten eggs, putting them, putting them over Nature's the side there. hand grenades, yeah, yeah. Anyone want a, a hand grenade? Organic hand grenades, anybody? Uh... So you, you understand, what you were, you were criticising <laughs> them, you exactly understand their situation. Beehives as well, you sell them as well next to them. Why? They make a pretty good, like, more of a cluster bomb. Right, sure, I'm, I'm with you, yeah. yeah. Right? If I'm going to go like down, if I'm opening, expanding my weapon range that I'm selling. Yeah, so food-based weapons. I think so, yeah. Beehives are sort of the, they're going to be quite expensive. That might be like 10 quid for a beehive and you can buy individual. I don't know, that's, I think that's pretty cheap for a beehive. You 10 quid for, you're harvesting beehives for 10 quid a pop. I'm not sure, I haven't found where I'm sourcing them from yet exactly. Well, you're stealing beehives. But- <laughs> <laughs> it might vary. Well, I might have to use a couple of rotten egg hand grenades to throw at the farmers, and then I'm going to steal the beehives, and then I've made a bit of a profit, and any eggs yeah. I've got left I can sell. Maybe it's a bit of a, you know, buy one beehive, get a couple of hand grenades for free, something like that. What was what was the question? <laughs> not yeah, I was going to say, not our best business proposition we've come up with on the podcast, I will say. Yeah, was the question, what's my worst egg type? Um, oh, yeah. <laughs> Probably, uh, I mean, I've had some bad scrambled eggs before that are really watery, and that's no good. I'm not keen even on uh, sunny side down fried egg. What's the difference between a sunny side down and sunny side up? Is that they're not saying that? Upside down, isn't it, I think. Right, but, and you think it makes it worse? I think it makes it worse, yeah, because okay. you've. I think you overcook the yolk, and the right. yolk's the best bit. Yolk's my favourite. Yeah, yolk's obviously the best bit, yeah. The white is just your vegetables, whereas the yolk is your is your dessert. Yeah, and fried is easily the worst. Like, I've never had a fried egg that been like, oh, yeah, this is lovely. It's like always at best, like, yeah, it's fine. To be fair, generally, as a food, not that bothered on losing eggs. Not even in cakes? Nah, I mean, like, you can make pretty good cakes without eggs. I think you can, yeah. Technology has improved. Vegans have got it sussed, you know? How many eggs per day, or rather how many days per egg, maybe we should ask. N- none uh, on average zero uh, if i go shopping it's very rare i would buy eggs i go through phases because so I, I really like if, if we're counting this as a form of egg eggy bread being the best form of egg eggy bread's a form of you that's you know is that the same as french toast um but french toast has cinnamon on it right i think french toast is more of a yeah like a desserty sweet thing whereas eggy bread i think is more savory All right but it's still basically bread dipped in egg fried yeah I think that's a way to present an egg. It's only two ingredients, and one of them's egg. So I go through phases sometimes where that's that's a lunch of mine. But if I'm not having that, then I'm basically never ever buying eggs. Interesting. So so it isn't eggs per day, but days per egg. How how many days go by before you have an egg? Do you think? I reckon the last time I ate an egg was over a month ago. Okay, interesting. So probably. Those six eggs you've bought, that's going to last you at least half a year. Yeah, yeah, exactly. This is why I only <laughs> want to buy one at a time. I just don't go through them at a rate, you know? <laughs> See, I don't think in that sense I'd, I'd mind losing them. I think it's when we expand outside of uh, food-based chicken eggs that, that this whole thing starts to crumble a little. Yes, or crack, I guess. Hey, yeah, very good. <laughs> Thank you. Go on, expand it. Expand our horizons a little bit, Jack. What are we talking? Well, at first, I was just thinking, you know, all birds and lizards gone. Oh, lizards. I forgot about lizards. But the real problem is, Chris, I don't know if you've done your sex ed classes, but us little humans, and in fact, all life involves an egg at conception. It does. A sperm and an egg. Yeah. Not something I'm ordering at a restaurant. <laughs> no, that's, I would say, probably the worst way to have eggs. Um... <laughs> With a side of sperm, please. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, what's that? Uh, you're like chickens. I was like, uh, sperm and egg? <laughs> <laughs> Did you say spam and eggs, sir? No, no, no. <laughs> sperm and eggs, please. Thank you. I'm going to have to ask you to relate. <laughs> so, yeah, I think that race is quite a big issue for the future of human civilization and, I don't know, all life on the planet. It does. So, I mean, there, yeah, there are eggs. You can't, there's no way of getting around it. And I try to look up, are there any animals that are created without eggs? And I couldn't find it. Even like asexual reproduction and stuff, they normally always involve the egg or like the egg splits or stuff like that. There's yeah. loads of different forms of asexual. But I couldn't find any that isn't like fungus or bacteria or things like that. There's a lot of those kind of things that can produce without eggs. But actual any animal I could find... Maybe I'm wrong. I'm no biologist. But I couldn't find any example of an animal that's produced without an egg. So 
not great. A bit of a problem, yeah. Yeah, we've we've gone from oh well, fried eggs are gone to uh, no life. So um, no life anymore. No, no further life. At least we get to continue. Yeah, we we get to see out our days, see our egg free days out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's a bit of an issue. I mean, uh, so they, they are definitely called an egg, right? Or are they called an ovum? Or is that an egg? Is that just a posh name for an egg? I think that's an egg. Yeah, that's just a posh name for an egg. Because, I mean, what we're eating is just that, but chicken's versions, right? It's gross, Which isn't it? Eating the unfertilized egg, right? Uh, um, yeah. So we're just doing the same thing. It's just we just call that a food. Oh. So, yeah, it's all the same stuff. Great. Brilliant. Well, you brought the mood down. I was trying. I was trying to avoid it as long as I could. I was happily talking about you know fried eggs and scrambled eggs and sentry eggs, but it was always going to have to come up. You know. Yeah, I had it on my list too, and I I also just sort of thought like, ooh, is that going to be the downfall of everything? Let's just brush this under the rug Should and then let's move on. Forget it. Yeah. <laughs> interesting i did look up a little fact though which i found interesting um so i was thinking what the biggest mammal in the world is that would have a sperm and egg type egg and this is of course the the whale yeah do you know how big a whale egg is see this is where i really can't gauge which way it's gonna go it's either gonna be like stupid like it's gonna be like the size of a car or it's gonna be like just a tiny bit bigger than a human egg do you know what i mean it's gonna be something weird like that I'm going to go the second one. I think it's going to be counterintuitive. Bing, 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 bing. Correct. Yes. A whale ovum and a human ovum are basically the same size. Just, yeah, de- yeah depends. So, isn't that weird? A mouse ovum is about half the size. Okay. So, still relatively, like, massive for them. Yeah, exactly. So They must not be packing many of them around. Because, obviously, is it is it the same for my... I guess, why would you know? But, like, you know, all... <laughs> <laughs> all women carry all of their eggs that they're ever going to have, right? They don't, like, create any more, right? They're born with all of them. Is it the same with mice? Because surely they, they're not packing many if they're that big. Compared They'd to have them. to have extra, like, luggage or something to bring yeah. it about. I mean, that's crazy. <laughs> They've got a little handbag filled with eggs. <laughs> <laughs> I did feel a little bit offended when you just said that, by the way, and I can't... I don't know why. Like, you, when you just said... <laughs> well, I don't, well, I don't well, know... Why would this idiot know anything? <laughs> <laughs> it just... I mean, I don't. I haven't got a clue, but just the way you said it, I just kind of thought, well... I <laughs> Makes you feel any better. I don't know either, man. <laughs> so hold up a minute. Hang on. Give me, give me, give me a chance. But I couldn't even defend myself. So I'm very much like the egg, fragile in my. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> so I mean, if you know the answer, please prove me wrong. No, I don't. No clue. Okay. They're called a sperm whale as well. So do you get a sperm whale and an egg whale, and they meet up together and they have a <laughs> they have a baby? Good. Like that. Yeah. That's how it works. Maybe we should just ask the vegans because they're quite good at coming up with egg substitutes and maybe they can work out our reproductive issue as well. They are. Do you know what the, the best current egg substitute is? Uh, there's quite a few out there. I know the main two are like aquafaba and flaxseed. They're the main ones that people tend to use. Aquafaba. What is it? I think aquafaba is the liquid from chickpeas, maybe? I should know that. I, I don't know if that's correct. Right, a starchy kind of liquidy thing. Yeah. Are you saying farba or farva? Farba. Farba. A Q U A F A B A. Aquafarba. Aquafarba. It sounds. Um, I love saying it. Yeah, it's a fun word. Because I know there's far. What is it that um, Hannibal likes? Is it fava beans? beans? Yeah, and that's Chianti and fava beans. Yeah. And what is Darth Vader to Luke Skywalker? Is that father? So that yeah. So he's father. <laughs> there's father <laughs> and farba. Yeah. So conf- English language, man. Come on. I know. A mess. But I don't know what they're like. I don't think any of those replacements are actually like good as eggs. Like you wouldn't fry them and have them as on your fry up. You know what I mean? Yeah, they're just yeah. good in things like cakes as a replacement, or right. like as good like as like egg whites in like you know like I think if you make it, you know, some cocktails have egg whites in. I think people sometimes use like an alternative for that and stuff. Oh, do they? Wow. What? Oh, uh, what well, like an advocar kind of thing, or because uh, that's kind of eggy. Yeah, I don't know what the replacement is in a cocktail, but like, you know, my, one of my favourite cocktails is like a sour, like an amaretto sour or whiskey sour or whatever, normally meant to put egg white in it. Are you? Yeah. What? Yeah, you make like a foam out of the egg white or whatever. Right, to get a little bit of foamy foam. That makes sense. And then you can make vegan ones. And I can't remember what's used, but uh, yeah. Something like that. Interesting. Wow. Vegans, you dead, they They're creative. Creative. They're trying all sorts of things. They're frying banana skins as bacon and all sorts of crazy stuff. Is that one? That's something people do. Okay. I mean, they they still haven't nailed bacon, have they? Like, that's one that they just cannot work out. 
Yeah, it's tricky. It's tricky. A lot of the, a lot of them are great these days. All the meat replacements. I'm a big fan, but bacon they just can't they just can't nail it. Well, there's still a lot of like undiscovered Amazon and stuff, isn't there? So maybe they'll find the perfect plant. The bacon leaf, yeah. The bacon leaf, yeah, and it would just be beautiful. And then there'll be an egg, an egg tree next to it, and yeah, yeah, yeah. a honey badger oh no no that's not good <laughs> that's actually the real secret if you milk a honey badger that's how you get honey it's not all the, just the bees yeah well, why would it be called it otherwise exactly <laughs> false advertising again someone that's going to be very unhappy that all the eggs have suddenly gone is the owner of the most expensive egg in the world uh do you know what it is i don't know who the owner is i assume it's a fabergé egg though it is it's the rothschild fabergé egg uh, ten million pounds that was last bought for or sold for or whatever you want to go, which is, it, it's such a why an egg? Like, if you're a fancy person, why do you want a an ornament of an egg of all things? Yeah, it does take some of the class out of it being called an egg, doesn't it? Yeah, so it's a, it's just an egg. Sorry, you you've got an egg over there, a very dolled up like sparkly egg. Did you make it yourself? Did you have fun with crayons drawing on the egg? Like it's like a kid's project. What? Yeah, when you used to do that as a kid, yeah, you used to do, like egg and spoon race. You used to draw faces on them. <laughs> exactly. Just somebody's just done that, but like a very elaborate version. Yeah, just some king or queen somewhere just demanded like a fancy egg, and that's what they got. Yeah, every day they were like they were asking for breakfast. They're like, this egg isn't fancy enough, and they just kept putting more and more gems on it. And then eventually they were just like, this is now you are where this is costing us ten million. A day. We really need to <laughs> cut back on our egg costs. Yeah, exactly. It's crazy. The next, I've got the top five five ex- most expensive eggs, and it's interesting because only only one of them is a Fabergé. Oh, what other type of eggs are there? Exactly. Right. Interesting. So the next one down is an elephant bird egg from the 17th century. It went it went extinct in the 17th century, so there are no more elephant birds. I want to know what the hell an elephant bird is. It's it, I think it looks a bit dodo-ish. Imagine a dodo, maybe stick a trunk on it or something. I was going to say, has it got a trunk? Or, I guess if it's not, again, false advertising. Man. Again, uh, people don't know what to name things nowadays. It's it's tricky. An elephant bird, honey badger, what are they doing? That look, uh, okay, that looks nothing like an elephant. I would say that <laughs> looks absolutely nothing like an elephant. Yeah, I don't know what they've done there. But... Google it if you're at home now. How is anyone coming elephant with that? That is an ostrich. That is an ostrich. Yeah, you call it an ostrich bird. Well, no, because an ostrich is already a bird. That feels uh, reductive. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's a bit confusing, isn't it? Uh, it's like the Sahara Desert or Chai Tea again, you know? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. But, yeah, the elephant bird egg, um, if you can get your hands on one of them. Obviously, no new new ones dropping anytime soon. Just all the old ones left. It is a pretty big egg, I'll be honest. But, it's I mean, how much did you say? massive. It's £100,000. Um, That's the second one. So it goes down from 10, 10 mil to 100000 Yeah, there might not be every single one ever, but right. there, there's a good variety here. But okay. it's crazy, right? So it is it is uh, the it's 8.5 litres of egg. Like, they're actually measuring it in litres. Um, which is equal to about seven ostrich eggs of size. Imagine that. You thought ostrich egg- eggs were big. Nah. Elephant bird. I think now I know why they called it an elephant bird, because it was huge. Yeah, true. How how many mils, do you say? 8.5 litres. 8.5 litres. A normal egg has 45 millilitres, apparently. Um, it, there you go. Yeah. it's it's uh, An ostrich egg is the same as 24 chicken eggs already. And this wow. is seven of those. So it's 168 chicken eggs worth of egg in this one singular egg. You can see why it was so sought after. Yeah. Imagine getting a dozen of them. <laughs> you need a forklift truck to bring them home. Yeah, I don't think they sell those in the dozen, do they? I think they do. I think they do come one at a time. I think so. You're right. Yeah, we finally found the limit of uh, where yeah. eggs become singular. If you um, make them big enough, they have to sell them one at a time. <laughs> it's crazy. Well, I just thought I'd look up what the smallest egg was, not counting sperm egg, um, and that's a hummingbird egg, and they are teeny tiny. You could have a spoonful of them like cereal. It'd be very gross and crunchy. Oh, really? But, man, there's over 200 hummingbird eggs in a single chicken egg. Whoa, that is a lot. Isn't that so many eggs? Hold on, and what, a uh, hummingbird hatches from something that size? Yeah. I mean, they are pretty small compared to a chicken still, but, like, 
my goodness, it's ba- they're basically like little insects at that point. Yeah, they, that must be smaller than an ant when they're born. What's going on? <laughs> yeah, we've gone from the elephant bird down to the ant bird. Yeah, that's what they, that's what hummingbirds should be called, ant birds. Ant birds, crazy. That is crazy. Imagine having to like make an omelette and somebody just buys you hummingbird eggs and they're like, "Here's a, here you go, make me an omelette." Imagine they crack it, crack each individual. Oh, having one. to crack each individual. One. Oh. I would just, you just got to throw the shell at that point, did you? <laughs> yeah, just blender, whiz it up. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Bit of extra protein, it doesn't matter. Yeah, you can't make an omelette without breaking a few thousand hummingbird eggs. Yeah. Next egg, 25,000, is the Chocky Wocky Doodah egg. Super fancy chocolate egg. 25k. What, Willy Wonka make this or something? I I wish he did. Yeah, it it looks very Willy Wonka-esque. But, oh, I can't put... How much? 25 grand? 25 grand. For a chocolate egg? Chocolate egg. I assume you're not going to eat. I mean, I would, if someone gave it to me. And I wasn't allowed to sell it on, but otherwise I'm just passing it straight on to the next the next person. Surely it's going to lose its worth the moment it goes off. Uh, well, yeah, chocolate eggs would go off, wouldn't they? Eventually, they got get all that white on them. Yeah. What I don't know. What makes it so expensive? What's in it? What's on it? It's just lots of chocolate. I think it's like the finest chocolate you can get with the finest. I don't care how fine it. How big is it? Uh, uh pretty big. Not elephant bird size. But pretty, pretty big. It would need to be bigger than a house for me to for, to spend twenty five thousand pounds on a chocolate egg. It would need to be gargantuan. At least maybe the size of a car would would be good. That's more expensive than most cars, especially second hand ones. You could roll it down the street like a big zorb. Yeah, and then it go messy. You can eat it. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, that's the only flaw in that plan. This is insane. <laughs> who who has bought that? A very, 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 very hungry person, I'm assuming, who had lots of money. £25,000. And also the name. It doesn't sound very... It sounds like something you'd get in a kid's thing. Not like a rich person would bid yeah. on, I'll have the chocky wocky doo please. Yeah, imagine the embarrassment of spending £25,000 on something called a chocky wocky doo I mean, you're just... <laughs> it's tragic, isn't it? <laughs> it is tragic. And last on the list, another type of egg, which I guess we kind of have talked about already, but... Kind of not. Caviar. Ah, yes. Is also basically just fish eggs. Um, have you ever tried caviar? I'm not, actually, no. Neither have I. Do you want to? No, I'm not a big fish guy. I mean... No. Yeah, so I just don't... I And I've heard it just tastes very salty and fishy and not, not really my vibe. Yeah, it, it looks gross it does look like the kind of i've seen it um getting like squeezed out of a sturgeon or something before and it just looked revolting yeah imagine i imagine the texture is not particularly good either so there's just nothing about it that appeals to me really no. and absorbently expensive for no real reason so, exactly yeah. i mean the most expensive for just a tiny little tub is ten thousand pounds for this uh strogartarga bianco caviar tub i reckon you nailed that i think i did uh <laughs> <laughs> um, are you just meant to eat it by the spoon, or like, what, what do you do? Like, you buy it, they get you a little caviar spoon to have it with. Like, what you yeah. just just like shoveling that in, like you would, like a pot noodle. Put it on some crackers. Noodle, take a caviar, maybe crackers. Yeah, that could crackers. Work. But then you'd have to find some very expensive crackers because I'm here like. At least fifty percent of your experience is going to be the crackers. So I mean, exactly. You're not just chucking that on a Jacobs and, nah, and calling nah, it a day. Now nah, you got to find some equally fancy crackers. Oh, I wish I'd looked up the most expensive cracker in the world, Dale. Yeah, you've got to pair them together. Have you ever tried caviar? I have not, no. Um, not, not not knowingly, anyway. Maybe I've accidentally... Is there not like a knockoff version? Like something that's similar to caviar, but it's not, that basically is like... You know, like uh, Prosecco to Champagne, kind of. Right, right. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of a, something. No, don't think so. Caviar's caviar, right? I don't, it's all... It's all the same. Just frog spawned, I guess. Lumpfish roe is a less expensive alternative to genuine caviar, apparently. Lumpfish roe. That sounds like a place that someone in a musical would live. And they're like, oh, I live on lumpfish roe. <laughs> yeah, uh, I-, I can see it. So is does lumpfish roe look good? Uh, it looks exactly like caviar as far as I can tell. Interesting. I bet you, I bet you it tastes better. Like, I know that I prefer crab over lobster any day of the week, and that's yeah, right. the cheaper option. Because I think it is one of those things where it's like, it's not even about how good it is. It's just, it is an expensive thing for the sake of being, it's same as like diamonds, right? Like, yeah. they just become expensive because they're expensive, and so people spend more money on them because they're an expensive thing, right? But even though there's nothing inherently 
exactly actually expensive about them. Just a bunch of rich people spooning the caviar down, trying not to throw up, looking down on all the little people who are eating their delicious Frosties or something. Oh Yeah, I'll take a bowl of Frosties over caviar any day of the week. What about all the the Easter eggs in TV shows and movies and stuff like that? Are these are they, cause are they eggs? Oh, you mean like secret hidden things like in video games and stuff like that? Exactly. Yeah, yeah and video games as well. That's another place they hide these Easter eggs. Where does that come from? Is it like the original version of an Easter egg was literally an Easter egg or something? I know that it was uh, the director of Atari in 1979 was making a video game and wanted to hide some stuff in it and thought, oh, it's a bit like looking for Easter eggs at Easter. Right. So yeah, yeah. Like egg hunt. Yeah, so yeah. I don't think it was an actual Easter egg that you found. It was just immediately already similar it was a simile to it yeah that makes sense i couldn't think of the link between why it could be yeah, of course egg hunts yeah i think there's a lot of unintended easter eggs in movies and films and stuff like yes i was gonna say because i know like pixar have done a lot of intentional ones haven't they they put like the that same letter combination i can't even remember what it is but uh it's a not a21 uh yeah, I know what you mean, though. It's like the bi- the name of the building or the room that they were first in or whatever. But yeah, I think a lot of them are just people looking for stuff and like finding it and then people, being, you know, overanalyzing. Exactly. A little bit of overanalysis. But I do like um, my favorite East type of Easter eggs is the Pixar when they they sneak and tease what their next yeah. movie is going to be in their previous one. I think that's a really cool. That must be fun if you're like the animator of that as well, just like sneaking them in and stuff. Just giggling to yourself, <laughs> trying to try to stifle your laughter as you're animating it in. Yeah. A113, by the way, is the, uh, the weird code. That there we go. See? Yeah, it's like, it's it's crazy how the the forethought that they have to be able to, to do it. Like, I, I, I'm sure the film is very much in development at that point massively. Yeah. But still, like, what happens if there's a big world event that now makes that film not able to come out for some reason? Because it touches on a too much of a sore subject. And now you've just got an Easter egg. Yeah, maybe they have done that. You think? I'll be surprised if that has happened because def- I can't remember which one it was. There was definitely a Pixar film that was cancelled, like mid-production, I feel like. Yeah. Maybe I'm wrong. So maybe there is one sneaking around that we wouldn't know. I guess if we never see the film, we don't know. Oh, and we'd call that one a rotten egg. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. Any other favourite Easter eggs in movies and films and games and things that you can think of? None that come to mind. Pixar's always... Weirdly, Pixar is always the one I think of. Yeah. When I think of, like, yeah, Easter eggs in films and stuff. Yeah. I feel like video games are quite good at doing them. I like the one... Is is this an Easter egg, I guess? But uh, in the Spider-Man game, where you can play as the Spider-Verse, like, skin you get. Right. And then it all goes, like, animated on twos and ones and that sort of thing. And, like, the whole style changes. That one's cool. That's cool, yeah. But I'm not sure if that's an actual Easter egg or just, like, a feature of the game, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, like a like a skin unlock or yeah, something. Yeah. But if you yeah. have to do something super... Si- I guess an Easter egg is something that doesn't have to be done for 100% completion, right? It should always be... Yeah. Like, I know um, Grand Theft Auto, like, there are some Easter eggs that nobody has ever found, according to the developer. Developers, but oh really that seems wild for how much that game has been played for how many years you know especially like gta 5 or whatever. exactly yeah yeah but i it's very easy to say that isn't it as a game developer like oh yeah there's you've not found them yeah that's just getting them to keep playing them <laughs> yeah <laughs> just keep, keep playing it keep give me your money uh, you'll well, find the eggs eventually yeah. keep looking now they've just got to come up with what it is that's going to be satisfied <laughs> <laughs> not if no one ever finds it. I mean, they can't reveal the Easter eggs. That would ruin the surprise. Yeah. You're right. I, I was always just thinking of TV and films, but e- Easter eggs in games, there's so much more scope for it because you could actively yeah, look. like look for them. Whereas in a film, you're just looking at what you're told to look at. That feels more in line with the premise of easter egg it's like a hunt you're like looking for a thing you're like yeah. looking searching the map whereas like in a film you're just watching it so it's like it doesn't feel like you're hunting as as much we haven't touched on him yet but probably the most famous egg in the whole world has vanished humpty dumpty humpty dumpty i, I feel like you should have a middle name as well there somewhere but i don't know what it would be what would humpty dumpty's middle name be uh it's gotta be something to do because it never mentions he's an egg does it that's that's exactly it. It's a very, very confusing backstory to it. Was it conceived at the time that he was an egg? So from what I can gather is it started out not as a nursery rhyme, but as a riddle, as a puzzle that you were meant to try and answer. So someone was just like, 
Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. What is Humpty? Uh, how? <laughs> how is that possible? Yeah. <laughs> because they're using horses, which is an insane <laughs> thing to try and do to put an egg back together. Yeah, that is bad. But you didn't know it. No, you don't know he's an egg. You, you're meant right. to think he's just a drunk. A ta- the town drunk. Okay, regardless... Having horses trying to fix this man is is a terrible solution. I don't know why you'd bring horses there too, yeah. That's only going to make the situation worse. You've got a drunk man who's broken his head or whatever, and you're going to let a bunch of horses loose on him. All of them as well. All of them, yeah. Every All horse. All of the king's horses. And you're just going to send them to this broken man. I can guarantee he comes out worse. I think whoever sent him was drunk as well. Yeah. But yeah, so you're meant to just think he was the town drunk that fell. Magic. How can he not be fixed? Oh, this is crazy. What a riddle. Surely a drunk man could be healed with like bandages and medicines. And th- but he, can- he can't be put back together again. What is this riddle? I'm so confused. And the answer, he was an egg. That's what they wanted the answers of the riddle to be. Oh, okay. Because I don't think that w- that is not where I would end up. <laughs> it's a bad riddle. Because I would just go, a great fall, if I fell from a good height, I wouldn't be put back together again either. <laughs> they just wouldn't bother. They just wouldn't be- <laughs> He's dead. I mean, so, <laughs> <laughs> not much we can do here. So I think it's perfectly reasonable as a person. All of the king's horses and all the king's men could put him back together again because he fell from a great height. Yeah, that, that tracks. Should have called a doctor. Maybe that could have helped. Yeah, maybe instead of sending 100 horses to him, maybe send a medical professional. <laughs> but, you know, it doesn't seem completely unbelievable that you couldn't fix him. I don't think must have been an egg. What? Exactly. It's a bit of a stretch, isn't it? It's like the egg is the ultimate unput back togetherable thing. But that's they're not even 100% sure. So that there's all this kind of weird story about it lots of lots of drawings of him originally as a human so he wasn't even an egg okay. anyway it's, it's very confusing i don't know what point he became an egg and he's definitely an egg now but i don't know when that transition occurred yeah. and the internet doesn't seem to know either but i also like obviously i don't remember the first time i was told the story of humpty dumpty i imagine it has to have been done in visual form because I don't ever remember my mum being like sat in Humpty Dumpty and then being like, by the way, uh, some backstory to this. He is an egg. And then telling me the story. <laughs> You're right. I got... When do you give the back? Do you just say, when do you put that bit in? You can't go Humpty Dumpty. Oh, oh, by the way, forgot, should have mentioned someone up top. He's an egg. <laughs> or like, I'm just about to tell you a story about a guy called Humpty Dumpty. Important piece of information. He is an egg. Like, I don't remember any of that happening. Let me tell you the tale of an egg. Yeah. That's how people should begin. So I feel like it has to only be done visually. Like I, I saw it in a book or like a cartoon or something, you know? Yeah. And then that ruins the riddle aspect of it a little bit because yeah. you just kind of go, well, you, he's an egg. I mean, look look at him. He's clearly an egg. He's just yeah. cracked and all of his guts have got everywhere or something. Quite gruesome, really, isn't it? It's, yeah. it's very gruesome. Yeah, it's quite a horrific. But a horse is just trampling on him, crushing him even more. Oh, the, everything's getting all scrambled. It's probably so hot there as well because of all the people about and stuff. It's yeah. cooking it a little bit and just getting all over the place. Oh, God. Poor Humpty. And also, why would you name your child Humpty if your last name is Dumpty? I mean, if your last name's Dumpty anyway, you're already having a losing battle. So you're just, you're really piling on with Humpty, aren't you? Exactly. Call him like, just like Fred or something. Just anything. Fred Fred, Dumpty. Fred Dumpty. I mean, that just sounds like a guy, you know, maybe he's not the coolest, but he'll he'll help repair your radiators or something like that. Call Fred Dumpty. Maybe they were just trying to go like, because Dumpty is a, let's be honest, a terrible surname. Sorry if anyone out there actually has the surname Dumpty. <laughs> But maybe they're just like, if you make it a fun little rhyme, it sort of takes the edge off. It makes him an immediately likeable, fun character, as opposed to just a loser. Yeah, maybe. Do we Are we meant to feel sorry for Humpty Dumpty then? Or is uh, it... Well, he is dead, so maybe. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. It's meant to evoke... Because I, I don't feel particularly sorry for him at all. Like, I don't know why he was up on the wall in the first place. Especially for an egg. That seems like an incredibly dangerous place to be. Stay on the ground, Humpty. Keep in your lane. Reckless behaviour, you know, has consequences. So is he a drunk egg? I mean, um, no, I thought I see him just a bit of a thrill seeker, you know. Oh, you think he was maybe like like walking about up there, proving he's all that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's quite daring actually for an egg, wouldn't it? Like you get sword swallowers and people doing all these stunts and things. But yes, watching a a stunt egg climb on a wall, yeah, that would be a little bit more thrilling. Yeah. So obviously we've already mentioned Easter eggs in TVs and films, but there are actual Easter eggs as well. It's Easter coming up very soon, if you listen to this when it came out. Yeah, yeah. 
So they'll be gone as well. Is that, does that bother you? You're a fan of Easter eggs? Oh, well, I was going to say that I changed my answer. I don't want it scotched anymore. I would like it Eastered, please. Yeah, okay. So no, chicken and Eastered? Or... <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I'm guessing Easter eggs are mimicking chicken eggs, right? You're not getting like, although they're more the size of no, ostrich eggs. They're more eggs. ostrich, yeah. They're, I would say they're much closer to an ostrich egg than a chicken egg. Uh, oh, and in in the UK, we've got little mini eggs. Oh, I love a mini mm. egg. I know you do too, Jack. They're more yeah. like hummingbird eggs. Crazy. You know what? As much as I love a mini egg, but actual Easter eggs, awful. Pointless. Hate them. Hate? Okay, hate strong. Obviously, if someone gave me an Easter egg, I'd happily eat it. But the concept of them is stupid, right? You're paying three times the amount of money to get half the amount of chocolate in a really awkward shape. Like, what? It is awkward, is it? There's a lot of wasted space inside an Easter egg. So much wasted space. If an Easter egg was a full, solid bit of chocolate, now maybe we're talking, right? Now we can talk. You want like an Easter lump? Yeah, I I want a cream egg the size of an Easter egg. Oh, yeah. Oh, if it's full of the fondant in a cream egg. Yeah. Oh. You'd literally die if you ate that. But, I mean, it'd be a good way to go out. (laughs) It would. It would. So, yeah, I I don't know. I just, I don't rate them. Yeah, I know what you mean. Mini eggs all day. Like, yeah, mini eggs, again, solid, all the way through. Great. Yep. Give me a mini egg. Give me an egg. <laughs> Just a non-mini <laughs> egg. Give me an Just egg. A regular egg. Are you telling me to a cheerleader here or something? What's going on? <laughs> <laughs> you mentioned they should just do that. Just release them. Just take them. Just brand them as eggs. We're now selling eggs. We're just selling eggs, everybody. Because regular again, old eggs. We, we talked about it before with, like, cheddars and mini cheddars. But, like, they don't sell just eggs. So how are they mini eggs? Because where are the eggs? Where were the regular eggs that you're comparing them to? Where have you got the mini version from? These have not been miniaturized. This is just their standard size. Oh, that would be fantastic. Yeah, if they were that size. Although I think you just wouldn't be able to bite into them enough if they're solid chocolate. They'd have to be ever so slightly. No, you, you have to like chisel at them. Chisel at them. Nice. Yeah. Okay. All right. They come with a little chisel in the pack. Yeah. 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 Obviously. Obviously. But you're a fan of Easter eggs though. I I mean yeah again I'll be happy to 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 receive them but you're right you've you've opened my eyes to the the the, the wasted space that is within them like you're buying such a big package especially yeah. in today's day and age with like, trying to cut costs on like you know packaging and and this and that for the environment and things like all that air that they're delivering when there's a a truck full of easter eggs 50% of that's air yeah granted it's like chocolatey air but still yeah but Easter eggs are also quite expensive as well. So, like, and you're not actually getting that much chocolate, like weight wise. You could just buy a chocolate bar, which is much more satisfying in terms of like density of chocolate as well, for much less money. And it's much less faff. I don't, uh, yeah, nah. Not for you. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm in agreement. I, I appreciate the material usage that it's made of, but give it in a different form. Your form factor's all wrong, yeah. Easter yeah. companies. And why bunnies and eggs? Isn't that that's teaching the kids the wrong anatomy and and biology of rabbits, right? I'm sure a lot of kids think that bunnies lay eggs. Yeah, that is. Weird. I guess it's just the spring thing, right? Isn't it? And it's like you know bunnies in spring, but also chicks are a, a symbol of spring as well. So it feels like why did that not become the what? Well, instead of an Easter bunny, it's an Easter chick. Chicken. Yeah, it should be an Easter chicken. A Easter massive chick, chick like Big Bird from Sesame yeah. Street. Yeah. Because, well, I mean, yeah, chicks are already, like, I think, in that iconography as, like, spring and that sort of thing. Eggs are around that as well. Why, where, what, yeah, why are they throwing bunnies into the situation? You've already got a perfect mascot sitting right there. Exactly. If anything, I am I think a bunny is going to give me, like, a chocolate turd. Like... Little droppings, yeah, yeah. Little droppings. I mean, sh- sure, if you want to do that, Easter droppings... Cool. All right. I'm a, I'm a bit weird, but not a big seller. I don't think it would go down. <laughs> no, but yeah, it's mixed messages. I wonder how many people grew up thinking that that ra- bunnies, rabbits laid eggs. I'm sure it's a bunch of people. Is this your way of trying to offload the fact that you thought bunnies laid eggs? I did at one point in my life. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. I'm not ashamed of it. I was told wrong. Did you? Ah, uh, interesting. I mean, I'm not saying I didn't. I can't remember if I, I don't ever remember thinking that. But it yeah. would be a logical conclusion to come to. Exactly. Or at least at least the Easter Bunny them, themselves is laying the eggs or something, right? Like, they've got to make the eggs somehow. They're not just cooking a chocolate egg in a kitchen. That's just weird. Like, what? No. Yeah. Is the Easter Bunny meant to be like a human-sized bunny? 
I imagine it human-sized. That's quite terrifying. That's Donnie Darko stuff, really, isn't it? We're talking now. I, I, well, we said a melon is the size of an egg to us for a chicken. So right. it would have to be kind of big size because Easter eggs are pretty big. They're bigger than melons, some of them. Yeah, true. If he's laying them, yeah, yeah. Or she, I guess, right? Is the Easter bunny a woman? Well, if it's laying eggs. Oh, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Are we confusing the, the message here of what's going I've on? I've always kind of seen it as a... Uh... The Easter Bunny is is like the Santa equivalent, right? Like he just he's running the operation, right? He's got a whole load of chocolate ostriches or something. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what the situation is, but it's choc choc ostriches. Yep. Uh, but it's I reckon it's dark. I reckon there's some real bad work practices going on. It's not it's not a good thing. You don't you battery don't, hens. Yeah, yeah. You don't want to be looking into the the workings behind the old Easter Bunny. But that's what I always kind of <laughs> saw it as. Right. There's gonna be an expose on her eventually. Interesting. Yeah. So yeah, because Santa Claus isn't laying all these toys himself i don't think so that's never been my understanding he's got the elves to do that for him yeah the elves <laughs> are the ones who laid the presents yeah <laughs> yeah it's very very weird messages i do feel like it wasn't really thought through very well initially when it first was invented maybe it's because i think a giant chicken is quite terrifying so maybe it's just that they were like originally they were like oh we'll just make it a big chicken but like, no we'll make it a big bunny a bit softer fluffier fluffy yeah that's the thing and they got a little bit as wait hang on as the easter bunny got a kangaroo pouch in its belly i'm now imagining that it does actually what yeah why do i why do i imagine that as well what on earth i've just it's just entered my brain that it's got a pouch why is that the iconography i have where's that come from is that just us is or is that a british thing or maybe it's i just think we must have seen an easter bunny and it was just a costume and it had pockets in the front to pull out the eggs or something but Maybe. Now I'm just, it's weird. But that, you are right, that is weird that we both have that vision. Any children watching, bunnies do not lay eggs, bunnies do not have pouches, and bunnies are not human sized. Do not worry, children, it's all fine. He's just quite terrifying when you put it like that, really. <laughs> it is. Is it? Is it just, it's all symbolic of Jesus coming out of an egg. Right? Or like coming out of a cave or being reborn. Yeah, I don't think he came out of an egg. Uh, I'm pretty <laughs> sure he came... Well, I mean, he technically came out of an egg. We all did. Exactly. But, um, yeah, cave, empty cave. I don't know. It's just an excuse to eat chocolate, let's be honest. I think so, yeah. And that's him... I'm just trying to think where you go from Jesus to chocolate eggs. Like, what, what point that merge happened? Like, how you got to from one to the other? Yeah, I guess... We want something to represent the vacant cave or tomb or whatever. So we want something hollow, but we want it to be something nice. But why don't you put little chocolate Jesuses inside the eggs? And then they've got something in them. No, because the idea is he isn't there. Oh, you open the egg up and he's... No, uh, he's Where's he gone? Where's Jesus gone? Yeah, you're expecting to find Jesus inside the egg, I think. You're right. And he's already he's already left. Yeah, he's already gone. <laughs> is it something to do with, like, immaculate conception or is that not i think that's something completely different mate. is it okay all right I, yeah. I have that phrase in my head and that reminds me of easter for some reason okay well because of eggs again and conception i think so but they're not immaculate conception either right you still need a daddy chicken to fertilize an egg yeah an immaculate conception is just oh how did, oh how'd that happen well yeah that's why you don't get easter sperm because it's immaculate conception <laughs> <laughs> oh god oh no Oh, Cadbury's, if you're listening, please don't. <laughs> yeah, really not my best idea. I mean, you're getting kicked out of the pitch meeting if you suggest that one. Now, guys, we've done eggs. I think the next thing we should be moving on to is sperm. <laughs> oh, dear. It's horrible. <laughs> no, you could just do like, you know, like you get like a candied worms or whatever, like those sort of things. Yeah. So you have chocolate Easter egg, you have like candy sperm. Candy sperm. No, thank you. That's horrible. You've just made the Easter Bunny even scarier than what we've been saying before. Just going around giving sperm out to everybody. Maybe it's a good thing we're getting rid of eggs, eh? Oh, yeah, I think so. I feel queasy. I feel a bit sick. So other than feeling queasy, how are you feeling about a world without eggs? Yeah, a bit of an emotional ride here. Um, Like you say, initially feeling, yeah, probably fine without a bit of egg going on. But then, whoa, children babies all this other stuff brush that under the carpet go back to feeling okay again a little bit annoyed at rich people mm -hmm. 
and then uh, just feel sick imagining eating spermy chocolate. So it's been it's been a ride, uh, but we got there. <laughs> How about you? <laughs> Uh, yeah, basically exactly the same. If we're just talking eggs, like actual eggs, like you'd have day to day, couldn't really care less. Yeah. Uh, but the whole uh, end of all life, I'd say bad. So, uh, yeah, keep them, I reckon. Keep the eggs, please. We'll defend them. We'll look after them a bit better. We'll look after them. Yeah. So, yeah, thank you, eggs. But there we go. I think that'll do us for today. Hope you enjoyed listening. Yep. If you have any thoughts on a world without eggs, you can contact us on our socials. The links are in the description. Thank you very much for listening. That is actually the last episode of this current season. So we will be gone for a bit, but we will see you when we get back. Yep, we will indeed. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.